Hi students and welcome to the next presentation in electromagnetism. In this presentation we'll be looking at magnetic force. In the previous presentation we saw that when you have a moving charge in a conductor it creates a magnetic field so it would make sense that from this point that a moving charge will therefore react to a magnetic field because it generates its own but we'll talk about that soon. And we have two really simple equations that we'll be applying um, that provide the force on a free charge that's moving at a velocity and the force on a conductor that has a current running through it. Before we get into things too much, I want to talk about the electron gun. Now this could be, it could be argued that this is saved for uh, later on, um, but since we're talking about the um, deflection or the movement of charged particles due to magnetic fields, I think we should just quickly talk about how we can actually get these particles moving in the first place. And this also gives us an opportunity to try all the equations um, mixed together. So the electron gun is a way that we can produce electrons and then get them moving. So it's, it's actually a pretty straightforward uh, way that it works. You've got this um, hot cathode here and as it heats up it sort of generates these free electrons and then you have an electric field that's produced by two plates. So remember from the previous um, presentation you can generate an electric field by say applying a potential difference across each terminal and then you are essentially attracting so if, the, if you have this positively charged plate here and a negatively charged plate there, if you're attracting the electrons to that plate, they will move, they will accelerate. And then once they leave this positive plate um, and they're under no electric field, then they will travel at a constant velocity and a constant direction, which is why you have these electrons here just traveling in a straight line once they leave. First, I just want to um, see if you remember how to calculate the final velocity of an electron as it speeds or as it accelerates between the two plates of the electron gun. So uh, in this question you have an electron gun and it releases electrons and they're accelerated across a potential uh, and that potential difference is 32.0 kilovolts and the distance between them is 30 centimeters. So knowing that information can you calculate the final velocity of the electrons as they exit the gun. So essentially, what is the final velocity once that electron reaches here? What is the gain in velocity from here to here? So the first thing that you need to recognize is uh, this equation from your formula sheet, or it might be written as the work done on the charge is equal to the voltage multiplied by um, the charge itself. And this work is going to be done by the field on this electron, which means it's going to be accelerating the electron. And that's going to provide it with uh, kinetic energy. So you can therefore say that this is equal to kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared. And if you rearrange that equation, what you'll get is v is equal to square root of 2vq over m. And this equation you'll see a fair bit when we talk about particle accelerators. And then when you substitute those values in, you should get 1.06 times 10 to the 8 meters a second. And again, if you get a value that's over 3 times 10 to the 8 meters a second, um, you've made a mistake. Okay, so how do we go from magnetic fields being generated to having a magnetic force on a charge or a conductor? If you have a charge carrying conductor in a magnetic field, the magnetic field that's generated by the charge carrying conductor itself is going to interact with that field that it's close to or nearby. So whenever you have a charge or a current running through a magnetic field, you can expect that that charge or current carrying conductor will, uh, will experience a force just like any other magnet in that same field. Okay, so in this demo, we're looking at the deflection of electrons in a magnetic field. So what I've got here is a vacuum chamber with a Maltese cross sort of shape in it. And the reason it's like that is you can see that this is just regular light. When the light goes through it, it creates a shadow. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fire electrons through there so you can create a shadow with the electrons. This coating over here, what that does is when the electrons um, interact with it, it will start to glow green. So that's when you know the electrons are going through. So I've already turned on um, the cathode. So that's where this power here is applied. And what that's doing is that's generating these electrons. And now what I can do is I can turn up uh, the voltage across there, which is the voltage across these two points here, that's going to accelerate those electrons so that they can run through um, and then hit to the other side, and you'll see um, that being generated. So let's see what happens now. 
So I'm going to turn it up and see what happens on the screen. There you go. So you can see that starting to glow nice and green and that um, is your electrons that are passing through and they're creating a bit of a shadow there, which is great. Now what you want to do is you want to show that that um, that those electrons can be deflected with a magnetic field and that's why I've got a magnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one end of the magnet and I'm going to push it towards uh, one end of the field and you can see that it starts to deflect. If I'm just trying to get you on the inside there, you can see it starting to, this is actually, there we go. Now if I flip that magnet, what do you think is going to be happening to that then? So now I'll flip the magnet, try again. See, so it's kind of like a, you can see it's actually a bit of, it's attracting some of those electrons, right? And on his side, if I flip it, it's actually repelling them. Now you can see that that's happening with the electrons as they pass beyond the Maltese cross, but I can actually shift the image completely if I deflect the electrons on the other side of the Maltese cross. So you can see that now the entire, it's like a light source is being moved. I'm bending that. And again, if I change the polarity of the magnet, I get a different effect. Uh, cool. All right. And that's a demonstration of the deflection of electrons in a magnetic field. Okay, so I've jumped out of the screen so I can show you the right hand palm rule. So you've already learned that when you have a current going through a conductor, your thumb is the current and your fingers wrap around and they are the um, magnetic field. Uh, this right hand palm rule is the second rule. It uses the same thumb and fingers, except in this time, this time we're looking at the force on a conductor or a positive charge. So um, your thumb is still the current or the charge or the movement of charge. So if you have a moving charge, then it'll be like that. Now it's a moving positive charge. So an electron will actually be the back, but we'll get to that later on. And your fingers are your magnetic field. Uh, and instead of being curled like they are when you have a conductor, we're looking at the magnetic field um, that this conductor is exhibited to. So it'll usually be a straight line or a uniform magnetic field in this direction. And your current is in this direction and then your palm, think of your palm as pushing something, your palm is showing the force exerted on that charge or the conductor. So we have a couple of examples there. You've got, um, so the current is running into the page, I suppose, and the field is going across. So if you have your current going this way and your field going that way, then you can see that yes, the force is pushing down. Uh, in this case, you've got the same sort of thing, except we've got the current acting in the opposite direction, which means my palm unflips and you'll probably hear me scrambling to make these hand gestures and the force is now pushing up. Okay, so, so let's look at these two examples. We have a charge here, a positive charge, and it's moving in a velocity to the right, and we have a current and it's moving through a conductor to the right. So the question I would like you to have a crack at answering is, what is the direction of the force experience in each of the scenarios? And if you can, what do you think the motion is going to be? So what do you think the charge is going to do and what do you think the current is going to do? Give that a one. Give that a go. Okay, so I'm going to start actually with the current because the current is the most obvious one. Um, if you have the current going in this direction, so your thumb needs to go in this direction, and you can see that the magnetic field goes into the page, so I need to sort of flip around there. So you can see that my, my wrist is actually pushing forwards or pushing upwards in this case. So you'd expect uh, the force to be upwards, and you'd also expect the, the, the conductor to also be moving upwards. So with this particle, however, it's the same scenario. You've still got a velocity of a positive charge moving towards the right, so it is going to experience a force acting upwards. Now, once you have that force acting upwards, the ne in the next sort of you know, split second, you'd expect the particle, therefore, to be here. And the velocity vector would no longer be perfectly horizontal. The velocity vector would now be like this. Now, again, if I apply that right-hand rule, the velocity vector is turned a bit, so the force is actually going to shift a little bit as well, and my force is going to be acting a little bit further that way, and therefore my vector, the next time I have, um, or the next split second, I have the velocity vector that might be doing this, and of course it depends on, on the magnitude of the magnetic field and, and of the um, how much charge you've got. Um, so this is one case where I have a fairly strong uh, magnetic field, and what you'll find is the motion, and this is why it was a little bit tricky, the motion of this particle actually ends up being circular. 
Well, if it's in a if it's in a completely uniform magnetic field, but what will happen here is once it leaves the field, it'll, it'll continue in that motion there. In in my drawing in particular, however, for a current that can't happen because the charge can only travel in this direction. So we're looking at the whole conductor here, which just experiences that upward force. But if it's a free charge, then it can just move uh, in that circular motion. Okay, so in this presentation, I'm going to show that a force is going to be exerted on this conductor when a current is going through it and it is inside a magnetic field. So over here to this piece of wood, what I've done is I've taped three super strong neodymium magnets uh, to the book. You might can't really see it. Um, they've all got the same polarity facing up. I'm not sure whether it's north or south. And I'm going to insert it between these two rails that I've created. And what I've done is I've actually taped these copper wires uh, to these bricks and then attach them to a power supply. So what will happen is the current will travel from positive end through this wire and then when this sits on top uh, it will connect the circuit so that a current, I'll just turn this off, so if I have this sitting on like that a current will run through the wire and uh, back to the earth and if I take the magnet out what we should find is that when I turn the current on a current will flow <clears throat> and then um, it'll It'll chip out. Let's see what happens. There we go. That click meant that uh, current was going through and um, the overload has been on. So current was running through, but nothing happened. So what I'm going to do now is put in my magnets. So now I've got a uniform, hopefully uniform-ish field that's either coming out or going in um, to this conductor. Now remember the positive end is on here, so the current should be traveling downwards. So it should either move left or right, depending on which way um, the field is going. So let's see what happens. There we go. Cool. So what we found is that there was a force that was pushing it uh, to the right, which means that the current, and if, that's, if the current is moving down, then that would tell me that the field was going into these magnets. So these, these are the um, south poles of, of those magnets. Um, to sort of illustrate it further, what I'll do is I'll change the polarity. I don't know if I can do it while holding the camera. So I've now changed positive to negative. And what do you expect to happen? Obviously, it should hopefully uh, go to the left. Let's see what happens. Cool. Well, there you go. A nice demonstration on the magnetic force on a conductor. Okay, so now that you're sort of getting the direction sorted, let's look at if you wanted to quantify how much uh, force there was due to this uh, charge or current running through a magnetic field. You have these two equations here, um, and notice that they're both just saying that the force is equal to something that's related to uh, the amount of magnetic field or the magnetic flux density. Um, and where, where they are different is for a charge, it depends on Q and V, and for a current, it depends on the amount of current and the length of the wire. Um, it's really important, I'll just pull this out really quick, is if you have QVB, Q being Coulomb's velocity, uh, sorry, velocity being meters uh, per second and B being um, the Tesla. If we come over here to the other side, uh, current is in amps, which is Coulomb's per second, and uh, the length is in meters, and the field is in Tesla. So what you'll find is the units are actually, um, the units are the same, but we just give the units as Newtons anyway. So when you're dealing with a charge, you need to know its velocity and how much charge there is. And when you're dealing with current, you need to know how uh, much current there is and the length of the wire. So now that we know how to quantify those forces, let's just do some basic calculations. Now, like I said, in most situations, you'll be given, um, you'll be told that the current or the charge is moving perpendicular to make, to make it very, very easy uh, to solve. So give this one a go. So if you'd apply your equation, it'll be F is equal to QVB because we're dealing with um, a proton or a charged particle. And what you should end up with is 9.63 times 10 to the 15 newtons, or oh, the negative 15 newtons. Okay, we have another example, and in this case, we're looking at a current going through a wire. So uh, give this one a go. And your answer would be applying that basic formula, current, length, magnetic field. So you'd be nine times one times 0 
uh, T and so you'll end up with 0 0.09 newtons nice and easy okay so some examples for direction so let's have a look at this um, particular problem here you've got uh, two magnets either side of a current carrying conductor um, which direction do you think that conductor will be forced to move so immediately I need to recognize that there are field lines for the magnetic field that are running from north to south. So the magnetic field is doing that. Um, you can do that in your head if you like, you didn't have to draw that. But if you've got a magnetic field that's doing that, that's moving this way, and you've got a current that's moving downwards, then you can see that I'm pushing towards the camera. So I've got myself, um, out, should be out of the page. And there it is. For the next one, you're looking at, uh, again, I can draw the magnetic field lines coming uh, down on top of the conductor. So I've got a field running down of conductor. Oh, I have to do this some sort of backflip here. And I can see that I'm pushing now into the page. Cool. Okay, so now this particular problem, uh, have a think about it. So because the magnetic field is running parallel to the current, there is not going to be any force on that conductor at all. And now try this one. So we've got our field lines to the right, and we've got our conductor going into the page, which means the, f the force, my, my uh, palm, is pushing down. So I should, should have downwards. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce a couple of extra examples here. Um, simple scenarios that you'll come across quite regularly when you're doing problems. Uh, the first of these is the particle accelerator problem. Now again, you'll be looking more at particle accelerators uh, next semester. Okay, so in a synchrotron, you've already accelerated the electrons, and they're now traveling at a constant speed uh, in a circle in this um, magnetic field that is turning them so that they uh, continue to maintain the circular motion. So the key to a, to, the, to a particle accelerator like the synchrotron is that you're looking at these electrons that are maintaining a circular orbit, and the only force that's making them turn so that they stay in the circular orbit is the magnetic force. So with that in mind, could you calculate the size and even the direction of the magnetic field required to keep the electron uh, in this particular orbit? Give that a go. Have a think about it, um, and then see what you can come up with. Okay, so the key here is understanding that the centripetal force that is maintaining the circular orbit of the electron is given by the magnetic force. And with that in mind, you'll know that it's mv squared on r, which is your circular motion, or the centripetal force is equal to qvb. And then once you know that, you can rearrange um, for whatever unknown you're after. So in your formula sheet, you've actually already got a version of the equation that solves uh, for the radius, I believe, which is one of the more recent additions to the formula sheet. So if you rearrange that, you'll get B is equal to mv squared on qvr, mv on qr. Just simplify it down, and then you just put in the numbers. And what you should get is 6.83 times 10 to the 6 Tesla. Uh, now it's saying what is the direction of the magnetic field required to keep um, the electron in orbit. So if the electron is traveling clockwise, that means the uh, positive charge is going in the opposite direction. So it's going anti-clockwise. And with my right hand rule, that tells me that the uh, force must be acting, sorry, that tells me the field must be downwards. My fingers are pointing downwards. So this is an example of a non-perpendicular problem. So where you're given a situation where the current or the magnetic field, they're no longer at right angles with each other, but they're not parallel. So if they're parallel, it's easy. You can just say there's no force. But in this case, um, this is telling us that the wire is at a, is at a 30 degree angle to the magnetic field. Um, so if you know the angle between the magnetic field and the wire, uh, find out the perpendicular component of the um, wire to the field or the field to the wire, and then um, see if you can tell me what the force is. Give that a go. Okay, so if I was to start by drawing my magnetic field, I'm just going to choose an arbitrary direction for the magnetic field. Give that direction B. 
and then I'm going to put in the wire. Now the wire, let's say the, the wire has a length that's doing this. Um, there's my length of the wire. What I need to find out is what portion of this length is actually operating perpendicular um, to the magnetic field. In other words, what is this length? And I'll call that length perpendicular. So I've been told that this angle between the field and the wire is 30 degrees, which means this angle here is 30 degrees. So that would mean that L, uh, the perpendicular component of L, is going to be uh, L sine 30 degrees. So now that I know that, I can actually solve it um, the way I usually solve one of these problems. So the force is equal to um, the current times the length, in this case the perpendicular length B. So I can therefore bring that out to say that that's ILB sine 30 and therefore it's 5 times 2 times 50 times 10 to the negative 6 times 0 0.5 which is that sine 30 and that's going to be equal to 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 4 newtons and there you go And before we finish this, I want to bring up that magnetic field of the Earth thing again. Um, so I've already spoken about how the compass aligns with the magnetic field. So even though it's pointing towards the north, um, it's actually pointing, if, if the Earth was a magnet, the, the north pole would actually be a south, uh, a south pole because the, the fields go from north to south. Um, now I want to introduce this idea of uh, declination or inclination of the magnetic field. So if you look at the diagram, what it shows is... If you were to put a bar magnet in uh, here and you then said, okay, well, if you remember the bar tells us that the South Pole is at the top and the North Pole is at the bottom and that's why you have these fields that you can see them coming out quite nicely uh, out of there. But have a look at what they look like um, as they exit the surface of the Earth. So what I'm stressing here is... Uh, where they come out, it's not parallel and it's not perpendicular. Except you can find, you can see that the lines are parallel at the equator, which is what you'd expect because those field lines they come out, and uh, as they um, go around, they then become parallel to the Earth when they're at where, when they're in line with the middle of the Earth. Uh, more interestingly, if you have a look at the field lines at the poles, the field lines actually come straight out. So the magnetic field does not run across. Um, like we think it does. Like we, when we hold a compass, we hold it flat, thinking that the magnetic field lines will run um, parallel to the Earth's surface, but that's not necessarily the case. So you can imagine that a compass would um, be very difficult to use uh, at the poles because the magnetic field is is actually acting more upwards than it is acting um, horizontally. So uh, for Perth, um, the angle of inclination we say is around 66 degrees. So if um, so this problem first came to my attention a few years ago. I had some students in the library asking about it. I think it came out of the old version of Heinemann physics. Um, and it utilized this idea of having uh, the angle of inclination uh, for a magnetic field. So this question is telling us that you've got a current that's running east to west. So the current's traveling from east to west um, with 100 amps. And it's asking you, what is the force exerted by the Earth's magnetic field? Um, and it gives you, an, it asks you to assume the magnetic field strength is 5.34 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And then once you've figured out what the magnitude is of that force, um, in which direction would that force be acting, um, given that there is an angle of inclination here? Give that a go. Okay, so part one often throws students uh, who think overthink it too much. They think that the field lines don't run perpendicular to the power lines, but they still do. It's just that you're looking at it from a different dimension. So the best way that I like to draw this diagram is actually to draw um, the east to west component of the line. Now you can draw it in three dimensions, and I've seen it drawn in three dimensions before. Um, but if I was to draw it in two dimensions, and I'm going to draw you know, a power pole like this, and I'm going to draw, I've got four power lines here. I don't know why I've drawn four. But there we go, four power lines um, connected. And what we're going to be doing is, so if we looked into the page, we're looking to the 
east and when we out of the page is west. So the magnetic field line, that would mean that this direction here is going to be north and this direction here is going to be south. So if we want to draw our magnetic field lines, they come out of the ground, remember? And they are at an inclination according to this at 55.9 degrees. Um, but it's still perpendicular uh, to the direction of the current. So that means that part A is, is really easy. It's just the force is equal to the uh, current times the length times magnetic field. So 100 times 10 times 5.34 times 10 to the negative 5. So you should get 0 0.0534 newtons. Part B, uh, that's where you need to look at this de at declination. So if we use our right hand rule, we can see that we've got uh, the current coming out of the page. The field um, is going, uh, the field is going to up and to the left. So if you use your right hand rule, then we can say that the force is therefore going to be acting this direction. So you can say that the force would therefore be what's that 34 point 34.1 degrees uh, to the vertical. Importantly, this problem probably isn't particularly realistic because the current running through that wire would be AC. So it'll be alternating. So you'll end up having um, the force alternating with that um, current. Um, and that is pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. If you have any uh, issues with this, um, it's best to try and get the mind out as quickly as possible. Send me an email or something on those lines. If there are any questions, let me know. Um, and then in the next presentation, we'll be applying this idea of forcing a conductor to look at DC powered motors. All right. Thank you.